Hey, church family and friends. Hope you're having a great Thursday. Thanks for joining me for a couple of moments. Wanted to give you some updates on things that are happening in the church and share with you a little word of encouragement. As you can see, I am here in the Welcome Center, and specifically, I am in the Kids' Garden. And I want you to look behind me at our grapevine. Our grapevine that's been asleep all winter has now come roaring back to life. But it's not just throwing out leaves and runners and new vines. It's putting out grapes. Yeah, grapes. And those grapes, there's a lot of them on here. And so I'm really looking forward to this summer when those grapes continue to grow and they continue to ripen. We're going to be able to have a great harvest. Man, I'm, looking, I'm so looking forward to that. And so I've, I'm here for another reason uh, to share with you uh, a word of encouragement out of God's Word, but I want to give you a couple of updates on some of the things that are happening here at church. I hope that you'll join me on Saturday night at 6 p.m. for our prayer encounter, uh, church-wide prayer encounter on Zoom. You'll be getting an email invitation here at, toward the end of the week, so I hope that you'll join me for that. I want to take an opportunity then to share with you another opportunity for us to, to pray together in a, a way that might be a little different, might be a little novel, but uh, I, I hope that you'll join me as we share that and we'll give it a try. And then also, I want to ask for your prayers as a, as a leadership team, as your, as your pastoral ministerial staff. Um, we're dealing right now with the, the question of when do we open and what does reopening look like? And so we have been compiling information. There is a mountain of information. And we have already identified our almost 40 different issues that we're going to have to provide answers for. And so we're still in that process of gaining more information and we're going to be talking with some more people and we're going to be listening to to different seminars and webinars and zoom conferences and all the rest getting more information so as we gather that information we're continuing to assimilate it and we're going to be uh, bringing a, a growing number of people in on this we'll be communicating this with you as we get us but but right now would you please pray that the lord will give us a wisdom that we can have clarity as to his will and what he wants because it really doesn't matter what anybody else says what's the spirit of god saying to us and he's going to be the one directing and he's going to be the one that's going to give us that instruction so we need to be listening very carefully so please please pray for us in that in, in that effort and endeavor would you i sure would appreciate it you know, it's real easy now that we are in, what, week nine of this, that we might be getting a little impatient. We might be getting a little antsy, a little stir-crazy. We might be spending a lot of time listening to the news. We might be spending a lot of time on social media, and tempers are, are flaring, and patience is short, and, and we're starting to, to get tired of all of this. And, and I know... It's, it's wearying to say the best, to say the least. But you know, I also want to remind you that God doesn't do anything by accident and that he can take any situation and any circumstance and use it to do something good. And he wants to do that in your life, even in the midst of all of this in, in the last nine, nine weeks. Uh, I'm here in the, in the, garden I'm sitting in front of the grapevine as I'm reminded of what the Lord Jesus said to his disciples the night before he went to the cross in John 15 he says I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he lifts up and notice that these grapevines if you were to allow these grapevines here to grow on their own they would just go straight down to the ground in fact, there were a few runners, a big a few vines that were actually on the ground. And what I had to do is I had to lift them up and tie them to the trellis. In other words, I had to discipline them to grow and go in the direction that we need them to go in order for them to properly bear fruit. So he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the father lifts up or he disciplines so that we might bear more bear fruit. And then he says, every branch of me that bears fruit, 
he prunes it. Now I noticed that there are a lot of branches, a lot of vines that are just going every which way and they don't have any fruit on them. And if the grapevine expends all their energy, make it, its energy making those branches grow without producing any fruit, the fruit that it is producing is not going to be as juicy, it's not going to be as sweet, it's not going to be as good as it could be. And so what the Father does then with the, the branches that bear fruit, He prunes it. Why? That it may bear more fruit. So I'm wanting to suggest to you that this may be a season for you where the Father is either bringing more discipline into your life because he wants to develop a quality, a, a character quality or a life trait that he wants in you that you don't have. Or he may be pruning you to where you lean on to him and you call out to him and depend on him for every aspect of your life instead of your own intelligence, your own wisdom, your own talents and your own abilities. So you may be in one of those two seasons, and, and every one of us are in those seasons at one point or another. So I want to remind you of that. that may, this may be that season. And so you really need to seek the face of God in this season. And I cannot say that enough. We need to have our hearts seeking God's face like never before. In fact, I want to issue you a challenge. I want you to do a log. I want you to do a little time analysis of how much time you spend watching the news or reading the news, how much time you spend on social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it may be. Do a timeline. Do a time analysis. How much time do you spend in those two areas, watching the news, reading the news, or in social media? And if you're not spending as an equal amount of time minimum in the Word of God and praying and being alone and seeking His face, then I would suggest that you dial back the former and ranch it up the latter. Spend more time in the Word of God. Spend more time seeking His face. I promise you that if you do that, your outlook on this, on this quarantine, this lockdown, whatever you want to call it, your outlook on it will be considerably different. And the reason is not because you've got a brand new mind, you, you're, you're changing your way of thinking. He's changing your way of thinking. Let him do that, please. Because I promise you, if you do, this is going to be, this could be one of the seminal events of your entire life. Not so much that you got locked down, but so much more because you saw the face of God and you came to know him in a way you've never known him before. Give it a try. Remember, I love you. We're in this together. We keep our eyes on Christ. We're going to win.